Hey everyone, Chuck here with Barely Battle Ready. Today I have a new video in the Airbrushing 101 series. We're going to talk about the pros and cons and differences between rattle can primers and airbrush primers. So some of y'all might have some questions around which to use, why, and so on. Some folks will swear by rattle cans. Some folks will only use airbrush. I use a combination of both, but I wanted to kind of show y'all the uh, process and some of the advantages and disadvantages of the both of them. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button and follow on Twitch. We have live stream games generally every Wednesday and we're gonna start live stream and painting as well. So let's jump right into it. Got these two pieces here approximately same size-ish. I'm gonna show you all the difference between priming with a rattle can like this, and we're gonna do a one piece with the rattle can, and we're gonna do one piece with the airbrush. I'm gonna show you all the difference between the two of them. So let's get started. I'm just gonna shake this up. <clears throat> the temperature outside definitely impacts your uh, rattle can paint. So I usually store these inside in a cool dark place, not freezing cold, but just cool in my basement in the storage area. And usually I find the hotter weather, the better it works, but just be careful if you're in really cold environments, make sure that the can is like room temperature before you go out and spray. do the slightly longer piece because a uh, rattle can is way faster than airbrush and I can't control the PSI on this of course so it's just going to come out as quickly as it wants to but we are going to coat the front of this
Okay, so here are the two pieces now that they are dry. This close-up shot, this piece here that my left hand is on, is the piece that was primed with the rattle can. This piece here, the one on my right, is the one that was primed with the airbrush. If you look very closely at the top, there is no noticeable difference visually between the two. Uh, if I rub my finger across the panels, the rattle can spray is much thicker when it comes out of the can. So this has a much smoother coat to it. This is a, the airbrush side is a little rougher. A large part of that is because of the way I thin my paint. It's pretty thin when I lay it down. So it isn't going to have as thick of a coat. But at the end of it all, it should not necessarily make a difference between how I paint these two pieces. The uh, smoothness, definitely, I want a smoother surface. It'll make things lay out a little bit better. But even with the texture on the airbrush side being slightly rougher, it's, it's marginal at best. So there's probably not going to be any visible difference there. Sometimes when you use a rattle can, if the temperature is not right, if it's not shaken up enough and so on, you can get some very different results. You'll have some folks that show up, they have like little bubbles that appear or like the way that it sprays, it, it, it can, the finish can be really bad. So just make sure that you're shaking up the rattle can very quickly or for a while to make sure that it's well mixed within and go from there. Some of the pros and cons, of course, this piece, the larger piece, and let me change camera angles here so you can see what I'm talking about. This larger piece, lengthwise at least, took about six minutes for me to prime. And that was to include me kind of talking it through on the video with the rattle can. This piece here, I had to refill my cup on my airbrush, I think three times. And uh, of course, cleaning the airbrush afterward it took me about almost 20 minutes. I think it was like 17 minutes and something seconds, right? So when you're looking at time savings, a rattle can is definitely going to save you a bunch of time. It is just way faster. There's no cleanup involved. You just have to, I mean, unless of course you spray all over the floor or whatever, wherever you're spraying. Again, do it outdoors, well ventilated area. This, the fumes are really strong on the rattle can and you can still kind of smell it right now, even after it's been drying in the sun. The <clears throat> airbrush side, of course, also has a distinct scent to it, but is not nearly as strong as the rattle can. Some of the other things that are pros and cons between the two of them, the rattle can, again, is way faster, but what you'll notice is that in some of the real small recesses of the detail, Sometimes it doesn't get paint in there and it's hard to control that with a rattle can because you can't control the PSI as it comes out of the can. It's just going to, it's either an on or off switch basically. And so you want to get close to try to make sure that you spray directly into that spot. However, you can't, again, you can't control the rattle can very well. At least I can't. So you're just going to cake on paint in that area. With the airbrush, you have a little more finesse where you can get very close and you can modulate the air pressure coming out of your spray gun. So therefore, you can get paint in very specific areas without covering up a bunch of detail. However, if you look at the two of them, one on top of the other, the top piece here, airbrush, bottom piece here is rattle can. I mean, it is so marginally different that most folks would never be able to tell the same. I mean, honestly, if you shuffled these up with a third piece, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference either. But by the scent, I could. Uh, apparently, in a former life, I was a hound dog chasing down people with uh, aerosol cans. So, yeah, the, the definite time savings is great. Some of the other things that I would definitely think about before you choose to use a rattle can versus a airbrush depending on the model, like with terrain and whatnot, if the aerosol can or the rattle can doesn't give me the best finish, that's okay. It's a terrain feature. But when it comes to like really detailed models, something I care very much about, I'm going to use the airbrush. The Stylin Res surface primer is self-leveling, which is nice. So it will, it goes on real smooth. If you noticed in my video, there's a couple times where I'm spraying with the airbrush and nothing's coming out. The one, one other con about using 
any surface primers that I have used, regardless if it's Dylan Res, Vallejo, or whoever, sometimes it gets chunky. There's like big chungus pieces that make it into your cup that get into the nozzle that clog it up. And so you might spend some time getting your airbrush to spray correctly, whereas with the rattle can, it's, it's just gonna go. I hope you all found this video to be informative. You know, take some practice using the rattle can. Make sure if you noticed in my video and I referenced it earlier, you know, the distance between how far you're spraying from the object and the can makes a big difference because it's a lot of paint coming out very quickly. So anyways, uh, appreciate you all viewing the video. If you haven't followed on Twitch, just as a heads up, we are going to be streaming live streaming painting sessions throughout the week. The schedule is yet to be determined, but we kicked off our first live one yesterday. And then also every Wednesday, we generally stream live warhammer 40k games so please follow me on twitch at barely battle ready or you can also and or follow me on youtube at barely battle ready as well please subscribe It'd be much appreciated to help grow and support the channel all right thanks a lot y'all have a good one